And it could be on sale soon at a supermarket near you. Food grown not on a farm, but in a laboratory. If you are just tucking into your breakfast this morning, how do you fancy eating food that has been grown in a lab? And should it be sold in supermarkets? And how might it be labelled? How do we know what we're buying? Because animal and plant cells can be extracted from uh, food to create new food, including meat and dairy and products and sugar. And it can all be done in a laboratory instead of on a normal farm, as our science correspondent Palab Ghosh explains. It sizzles in a pan, but was grown in a lab. Nice and juicy. It was grown from just a few cells taken from a cow. When there were enough, they were processed to have the colour and consistency of prime beef. This Wagyu sirloin is claimed to be healthier because it can be designed with lower cholesterol and added nutrients. OK, it's still sizzling. It looks like a normal steak, but how does it taste? I'm afraid you can't eat it. Right now, we're in the process of getting regulatory approval here in the UK. Unfortunately, we don't yet have it. They're very hard at work, given the resources that they have. So we're waiting right now to get that final green light. It's a similar story for Alicia Graham, who's found a way to grow an alternative to sugar in this bubbling flask at Imperial College's Bezos Centre. Can I try some? I'm going yes, to of course. taste it. In this case, I am allowed you to can, taste it. Uh, just put my finger in? Yeah, go for it. Mmm, it's got a really lovely taste as well as being incredibly sweet. But Alicia isn't allowed to sell it until it gets approved. These are all very new technologies, so of course uh, the regulators have to try and keep up with that, which is not always an easy task. Uh, we don't necessarily have like one specific route. And that's what you'd like? That is what we'd like, of course. As innovators, having a clear regulatory path, a clear way to understand what the regulations are, is key to getting it out to the market as soon as possible. The science of making lab-grown food is something that the UK is really good at. But the approvals process to have them sold in supermarkets takes far too long. And that's something that the British companies who are trying to commercialise the technology say is putting them at a huge disadvantage. The government's science minister has a solution. It's to get the lab-grown food firms to work with the regulator to draw up an approvals process that is both faster and safer. Safety will be enhanced by these measures. It's about making the safety requirements appropriate for what the technology is, not applying blanket requirements. If you look at where we are now with startup companies, so those companies that you know come from an idea, those are the companies that some of them will succeed and grow into the big companies of the future. And that's the economic driver for the UK. But critics are concerned there's a conflict of interest in having the lab-grown food companies involved in drawing up the new rules. The companies involved in helping the FSA to draw up these new regulations are the ones who are most likely to benefit from deregulation. And if this was any other type of food product, if it was sodas or sweets or anything like that, we'd be outraged by it. Food grown from cells could be available in supermarkets much sooner if the Food Standards Agency's initiative goes to plan. It will help the companies involved, but the question is whether they really will offer consumers a better, safer alternative. Palad Ghosh, BBC News. Well, joining us now is Professor Susan Jebb, who is chair of the Food Standards Agency. Morning to you. Good morning. Uh, for people who are just waking up and watching this this morning and maybe haven't heard about this happening already, can you just explain what, what's the upside of this? Why do we need to grow food like this in a lab? So cell cultivated products are foods that have been produced without using traditional farming methods like rearing livestock or growing plants. Instead, they take cells from a plant or an animal and grow it in a controlled environment to produce these new foods. So if you take meat, for example, what we'd be able to do is to reduce the amount of livestock we need to have. And that would bring environmental benefits because we know that, meats, that, that livestock production is a big contributor to some environmental damage. We've reported quite a few times over the last few months about plans to put uh, some of this lab-grown meat into pet food in the UK. And I think that's now starting, isn't yeah. it? 
when can I expect to go to the supermarket and see lab-grown human food on the shelves? It's going to be a little while yet. So we've, our job in the Food Standards Agency is to make sure that this is absolutely safe so that once it's on the shelves, people can make their own choice about whether to, to buy it or not. That process of authorising it, checking it's safe, is going to take us at least two years. And then after that, of course, the companies will have to scale up their production. They'll have to talk to the retailers about selling it. So I think it's going to be a little while before it's on the shelf. I wonder if I was a farmer watching this this morning, I might be completely up in arms about this because, you know, we're talking, aren't we, about the maybe environmental impacts, but actually people could lose their jobs if this takes off. Well, I think what we have to remember is the world wants more and more meat. Um, and so what I hope that this will do is fill in that gap so that we don't need more and more animals because of the environmental impact of that. What about labelling? That's going to be really important for people going to the supermarket because some people just might not want to touch this stuff Absolutely. or at least wait for a while. Yeah. Absolutely. So our job in the Food Standards Agency is to make sure that food is safe and it is what it says it is and the consumers are really informed about what they're purchasing. So once we've done our safety assessment, we'll then start thinking about what other factors do we need to put round that to make sure that people have all the information they need. We'll go out to a public consultation so people will be able to comment on our work before we release it, allow it to go onto the market. So there won't be a situation that somebody goes in the supermarket, buys something, thinks it's meat, but it's, it's not from an animal, it's from a laboratory. That It will be clearly marked. It will be clearly, very, very clear. Um, I wonder if one of the challenges is, you know, that in your job you will test it to make sure it's safe and all the standards are met, but... How do you know what the long-term implications of food like this might be? How do we test that? Well, that's exactly what our scientists are trying to do. We obviously can't do trials where we feed this to people for a lifetime and wait and see what happens. But what we can do is to look at all the, the components that go into it, every single thing that's used in the production. We can look at the evidence we already have about the safety of these, of these elements. But it is quite a meticulous process. That's why it takes us a long time. And I'm not going to apologise. We're not going to take any shortcuts. So I'm not going to apologise for taking our time over this. I mean, it, it kind of completely changes the way we think about food, potentially, this. I mean, if it's not come from an animal, can we even call it meat? Well, that's a debate that's be being had. I think what we should remember is that the food we eat today, there's an enormous amount of technology. Um, that's what gives us this extraordinarily wide range of different foods that many people really enjoy trying. It's interesting, isn't it? Because at the same time as this is developing, there are lots of people who would probably like to eat maybe more organic, in a more sustainable way, which, again, can be mm -hmm. very expensive because of how expensive it is to do that. Do you see, like, two trends here, people going in opposite directions? Well, I think it's definitely about people having a choice. And, uh, and as you say, when we go shopping, we all bring different... There's different things that are important to us. If you really care about... If you like meat but really concerned about animal welfare, this might be a really good option for you. But it, it's all really about consumer choice, and we're seeing the food industry giving people more and more choice in the different ways that they produce these foods. Bigger variety for us as consumers. Absolutely fascinating. It's, this is yeah. the kind of interview we'll look and play back in 10 years' <laughs> yes. time to remember yeah. when, when yeah. all this was new. Uh, <laughs> Professor Susan Chip, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you very much.